Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. In this video, we're going to look at California High Speed Rail and this Southwest High Speed Rail concept the authority introduced during its January board meeting. Southwest High Speed Rail takes three conceptual projects and imagines that they're real. These are California High Speed Rail outside of the San Joaquin Valley, Brightline West from Rancho Cucamonga to Las Vegas, and the High Desert Corridor, which would be a 54 mile link between the two projects and the high desert cities of Palmdale and Apple Valley. It's a nice idea, but how does something like this become a reality? Let's first quickly look at where each project is in development. The California High Speed Rail Authority is currently attempting to build its initial 171 mile operating segment between the San Joaquin Valley cities of Bakersfield and Merced. It is roughly half done after 10 years. They would like to have that running in eight years or less, but that leg of the project is currently five to seven billion dollars underfunded. The High Desert Corridor Joint Powers Agency is attempting to move through the Federal Corridor ID program, which would help them get through the NEPA process and maybe get funding. They're on step one of a three-step process. Cost estimates for the project run at about $6 billion. If all goes to plan, it could be constructed by the mid-2030s. Brightline West has been doing pre-construction and design work for the last 10 months. They're working on finalizing funding for the $12.4 billion project and should be within months of beginning heavy construction relative to the publishing of this video in February of 2025. Project completion is currently scheduled for a late 2028 to 2029 timeframe. So things are moving along, but there is still a lot to do. To make Southwest High Speed Rail a reality, the first step is for the California High Speed Rail Authority, the HDC JPA, and Brightline West to actually finish construction. That would result in a system like this. Given current schedules, something like this could possibly be running in the mid-2030s. You can see the obvious missing link. That is California High Speed Rail from Bakersfield to Palmdale. No problem, just build that then, right? Well, that gets into some structural difficulties California High Speed Rail is having with funding and maybe some difficult choices. As mentioned, California High Speed Rail is about five to seven billion dollars short on Merced to Bakersfield, and that is taking into account all identified funding through 2030. A major piece of that is the one-fourth of California state cap-and-trade revenues that the project receives. This amounts to around $900 million to $1 billion a year. That allocation runs out at the end of 2030, and the California state legislature has not yet renewed it. The general idea has been that the allocation will eventually be extended through 2050, but it's not guaranteed. For the purpose of what I'm going to talk about next, I'm going to make the assumption that the cap and trade allowance will get extended to 2050 because we need Merced to Bakersfield to be finished to really start talking about what comes next in a serious way. I view a Trump administration as a non-starter in terms of the California High Speed Rail project and the federal government. There are some recent federal grants that said administration may be able to hold up, so the project's financial situation could be worsened by about half a billion dollars on top of everything else. I don't have a crystal ball, but I can let the past guide me, and California High Speed Rail has managed to average about $400 million a year in federal aid over the last 17 years. Combined with cap and trade, that would give us a reasonably presumed average yearly inflow to California High Speed Rail of $1.4 billion between 2030 and 2050, or roughly $28 billion total, on top of what has already been allocated. 20 years is a long time, a change in paradigm for better or worse is possible, but there's no sign of it at present. 
I'm assuming the project will continue limping along severely underfunded. We've already established about $6 billion of that $28 billion will be needed to get Merced to Bakersfield operational, leaving $22 billion, and that's where the current plan runs into issues. The California High Speed Rail Authority's current plan is to extend service to San Francisco from the San Joaquin Valley once Merced to Bakersfield is done. Going off of numbers provided by the California High Speed Rail Authority in the 2024 business plan, that section will cost $27 billion, assuming completion by 2031. 2031 completion is not possible. I'm rolling with a 2050 completion date because that's when the next round of hypothetical funding runs out. 19 years of inflation results in $43 billion. That leaves them $11 billion short in 2050 compared to our supposed $32 billion in funds. Maybe that $11 billion drops in their laps the next 25 years, maybe it doesn't. Can they afford to extend service to somewhere in the Bay Area that isn't San Francisco? How about San Jose and then let Caltrain handle traffic to San Francisco in the interim like they do now? That would save about $7 billion, still $4 billion short. They could afford Gilroy, but then how do you get tens of thousands of passengers from Gilroy to San Jose? Running south from Bakersfield, you have the section to Palmdale. That's currently estimated at $17.1 billion completed by 2034. Adding 16 years of inflation gives us $26 billion. That's doable compared to assumed funding. Could this be why they're starting to talk about this? Do they want to go to Palmdale before San Francisco? Remember, Palmdale is where California High Speed Rail will meet the High Desert Corridor, and the High Desert Corridor would connect to Brightline West. That could result in a system like this. California High Speed Rail is also a linchpin in the plan because the planned Palmdale High Speed Rail Station is under California High Speed Rail's environmental clearance. Sure, it has plenty of flaws, but one thing this would accomplish is closing the north-south inland rail gap between Los Angeles and Bakersfield. At Merced in the north, a completed San Joaquin Valley California high-speed rail would connect with Amtrak San Joaquins and ACE. At Palmdale, California high-speed rail and Brightline would meet with Metrolink. This would get you from LA to San Jose in about eight hours with two transfers. Not the most compelling idea, but some other possible combinations are better. How about Fresno to Las Vegas in 3 hours 15 minutes, or San Jose to Las Vegas in 7 hours with one layover? It beats driving. Another possibility here would be electrification of the Southern California Regional Rail Authority's Antelope Valley Line between Palmdale and LA Union Station, which would enable a one-seat ride all the way north to Merced. This is no high-speed rail line. At two hours currently, it's quite slow. However, with the power of a high-speed train set, I have an express possible at an hour and 25 minutes. Paired with California high-speed rail, the High Desert Corridor, and Brightline West, that would result in the following travel times. Fresno to Los Angeles, 2 hours 40 minutes for an average of 104 miles per hour. That's about an hour faster than driving. Slower than flying, but not by much, and probably a lot more comfortable than the regional jets that are used for non-stop flights between the two areas. Los Angeles to Las Vegas, 3 hours 25 minutes, which would be about 15 minutes faster than taking Metrolink out to Rancho Cucamonga to get there, and it could be a one-seat ride. Same basic issues as current Brightline West plans. It's competitive with driving, not so much with flying. Although if Brightline West was the carrier, you would have the party car. That would also cut LA to San Jose down to six and a half hours with a single layover, which is similar to driving and three and a half hours faster than the Amtrak Coast Starlight. Based on the cost of Caltrain electrification between San Jose and San Francisco, I have an electrified Antelope Valley line costing $5 billion. 
The California High Speed Rail Authority would also have enough left over at that point to build its portion of the project from LA Union Station to the San Fernando Valley, including the planned underground station at Hollywood Burbank Airport. The benefit of that would be a 13 minute ride between LA Union and the airport, cutting the current time in half and bringing trains directly to the terminal. That seems a little more useful. It may be that California High Speed Rail is talking about this now because Brightline West and California High Speed Rail are both working on train set procurement and they want to ensure interoperability for some vague point in the Star Trek timeline when everything would be connected via the current plan. However, the authority did apply for a grant to plan both the tunnels under Pacheco Pass between Merced and Gilroy and the tunnels between Bakersfield and Palmdale. Now, maybe that's just political posturing to make some sort of gesture that they're committed to the entire project since the connection to LA is going to become increasingly in doubt without major increases in funding. You do have a new guy at the helm. He's looking to shake things up and get things done. Does that include a shift in the plan after Merced Bakersfield is finished? It wouldn't be the first time the plan has changed. The current plan is not the first. The first initial operating segment was actually Bakersfield to Burbank in order to close the north-south inland rail gap like I was talking about earlier. The whole envisioned California high-speed rail system depends on a lot more funding than anyone is dreaming of right now outside of Congressman Seth Moulton. So for now, they're going to need to think of how to move the most people possible as early as possible to keep the public behind the project. Palmdale could be one way to accomplish that if San Francisco ends up being out of reach on funding. So what do you think California High Speed Rail should do? Should they tough it out, hope more federal money starts flowing to the project and try to connect to San Francisco first still? Or maybe is it better to switch to Bakersfield Palmdale, get this regional high speed network set up first and possibly connect to Los Angeles with the Antelope Valley line? Let me know in the comments. Plenty more videos to come. We've been in California and Nevada for a while, so the next video will probably be elsewhere. Might be time for another Taking Back the Streets. Leave a comment with a freeway you'd like to see High Speed Rail on. A big thanks to Ben from the Empire State Passenger Association for starting the video topic conversation in the Discord server. Do us a favor and check out the ESPA Facebook page Lots of great train related stuff being posted over there. And if you'd like to join the Motley crew in the Discord server, check out the link in the description. Also, don't forget, super thanks are available if you'd like to support the channel mission that way. Check out the button below the video. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.